Hey guys, it's Sabrak. I'm here for a mini video for you guys. Um, I just, I think it's time for me to, whoa, what's happening? Sticky notes. Sticky notes. I think it's time for me to, um, to make an honest video. Um, this video will not tiptoe around your feelings. Um, it's an attempt to really get to the, to the root of your issues, why you don't draw well, or why your drawings suck. Um, and I want to say the word, like, why, I want to say why your drawings suck. I want to use that specific term because it's, it's what I say to myself. <laughs> I'm like talking to myself when I was younger. So I, envisioning who I was when I was younger and learning how to draw and thinking about art, I used to just say, why do my drawings suck like so much? I, I, I used to stare at sketches made by um, all these artists that I grew up with on DeviantArt. And I, it was always at the end of the day, my drawings suck. I suck as an artist. And now that I'm older, that was when I was like 15, I'm 25 now. And I have 10 years of solid, really learning experience experience in dealing with myself and developing patience to deal with myself and art and dealing with the patience required in art and I think I have some really good reasons for why your drawings suck and they are as follows this video will not be long if I do uh, point to any fundamentals in this video I will not be explaining those fundamentals my channel offers a lot of lessons that are hours long on explaining those fundamentals so I will not make this a, an hour video this video is meant to be short. Remember that. I'm trying to make this video short. So let's begin. The reason why, one of the reasons why your drawings suck is because of your line dependency. Everyone starts off drawing with lines, everybody. As kids we start off with crayons and we, we jump into shading eventually when our thoughts get sophisticated in the way we observe an object. But essentially we all start with lines and that's how our images of things are recorded in our brain with symbols and those symbols symbols are either silhouettes or outlines of some essential um, image attached to a word or a thought or an idea or a theme so when we think about a duck what we do is we we see the symbol of a duck we don't really see um, if if you have enough experience and a really sophisticated visual library after years and years of drawing you'll see a duck a picture of a duck the latest reference of a duck you looked at but if you're early on and you're in that stage where you just can't cross over into when your art looks good and acceptable, you're still, you know, in that initial steep climb, um, you will see a symbol. And that symbol is related directly to your line dependency. You will not, you don't draw things without thinking about them as being outlined or captured in some sort of outline or border. And it creates some sort of negative space and positive space against the background. Um, and, uh, and then we see an image pop up and that image sprouts the thought in our mind and then we attach it to a word and oh it's a drawing of a duck but it's just a symbol of a duck it's not a real render, render rendition of how that duck's physical form interacts with light in the real world drawings and, and, and art and drawing and art is the unfortunate dependency on two dimensions to create something three dimensional so your line dependency is making your drawing suck line dependency are you thinking about when I say when you're thinking about a cube do you see something like this or do you see something like this once you, once you start seeing this extra three-dimensional um, addition the z-axis into the way you look at a duck or any other object um, a horse a sword um, a piece of cloth a tree you will start to think about shading and its interaction with light and open space your drawings will get better if you stop depending on lines so that's one, and that's really the biggest one. That's the one I, I talk about all the time in my class. That's when I say, um, d replace your lines with edges. Stop using um, uh, lines to represent something that in the real world doesn't have lines. There are no lines in the real world. When I discovered that, my life changed. My entire art career turned for the better when I realized there are no lines in the real world. So stop depending on lines in your recreation of the real world. And this is only for those who, you know, when, when, when you say, like, uh, drawings suck, really what you're saying is your, your drawings aren't realistic enough to convince me of anything. Your drawings aren't realistic enough. There's always a really healthy amount of realism that we need in our work. Not, not like photorealism. I'm not talking about that. And I'm not talking about abstract art as not being art. I'm not uh, removing the legitimacy of, of abstract art in, in the art world. I'm just saying for those who want a job in, in um, 
and concept art, drawing, book covers, all of that, you know, that really fun stuff, you're going to have to have some realism in your work. And line dependency is stopping you from that. It's making your drawings bad. Number two is lack of references. I don't know what the stigma is around this art community of, of today's age, the online art community, but your lack of references has led to your re uh, has led to your not only dependency this is why it's connected to what comes right after so you have symbols in your head right what happens is if you use the wrong if you don't use references you'll keep rendering and you get better at rendering okay so you learn about the z-axis and then when it comes down to actually drawing something that you want to look realistic you will make it realistic just in the form it will not have any real tie to the real world and we're not all into this for the surreal or the macabre even if someone is going into that realm of art the surreal they have to know what the real is in order to bend it and manipulate it to create the surreal so you have to start working with references if you need help drawing a face stop depending on your manipulated and corrupted memory of, of a face that has has to go through your brain and has to go through your hand and has to go through your limitations of your hand, lack of technique in your hand, your lack of technique in the way you hold a pencil, lack of technique in the way you interact with your tablet, all of that, your, your tiny little symbol of, of a face has to travel through all of that before it gets to your paper and even then there's even more limitations, distance from your, from your um, from your sketchbook, uh, material problem, all of that. There's so many obstacles between your thought and its rendition on the paper. So why not use a reference that will ensure, it's like insurance plan. Um, getting a reference ensures that your rendition of that object is as close to the real world as possible so that it is recognizable. Lack of references creates, uh, it's not recognizable in your work. Uh, it creates objects that aren't recognizable. So you have to start using references. Shake off that stigma the way a dog shakes off its, 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 the water on its fur. Shake off that stigma and just get on it. Pick, get a good set of references for that object you're trying to draw, whatever it is, and and start drawing because when you use references you record healthier memories of those objects those objects start to look realistic in your mind and if they start looking realistic in your mind they will look realistic in your drawing and one of the reasons why you're drawing stuck right now is you're not using references you're using old old memories and symbols and all kinds of just a fog like this foggy muddy fog of how you remember objects and all of that is making you draw that object that much worse Number three is technique. You don't have any technique. You, you have no set technique. Technique even goes to the point of how you sit, how you angle your, your, your tablet or your sketchbook. Um, technique is in how much time you think about um, how you draw, not what you're drawing or the rules and fundamentals and physics of what you're drawing, but how you're drawing. Are you drawing with chicken scratch lines? in order to sketch something. So yeah, we use lines when we draw, um, but the, the line dependency is lessened. So we do need lines at some point because we're drawing, right? But there are drawings that depend on the form. So we use less lines to translate more form. And that's called line efficiency. So when technique is directly connected to line efficiency. So if you're jumping in there into your drawing, without any sort of technique to help guide you through the complexity of what it is you're drawing, you're going to draw badly, meaning you have to organize your process. Use shapes and shapes that are not just flat, actual cubes and, and pyramids and three-dimensional shapes. Use those shapes to help you draw arms, legs, any part of an animal. When I started using shapes and gesture lines, I started drawing much better because I took away the anxiety of having to draw something um, and just jump in right into it and jump straight into the detail. You don't you don't work with detail until way after. So that um, particular um, way of drawing is 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 driven by technique. Uh, another awesome thing, especially if you're painting, you're not just drawing, but you're trying to render, is working large to small with your brush. If you should be working large to small, because that means you're going to get the large shadows and the large core shadows involved in the form. And if you're not line dependent by this stage, it'll be, it'll be that much better uh, in addition to, to the skill level that's visible in your drawings. So your drawings will look much better instead of going in when you're trying to render hair and using tiny little 
little brush strokes to render hair, this is the worst thing because you're not treating it as a three-dimensional object. Even hair is a three-dimensional object, however flat, like a really flat cube or a rectangle. All of that goes into technique. If you're not thinking about technique, like really ask yourself, what is my drawing technique? Do I have technique? If you don't have technique, if that word isn't even in your vocabulary yet, most surely you draw, and I'm sorry, you draw badly. It means your drawings don't really make any sense, they're line dependent, they're very stiff. When you use technique and you want to draw humans, most of the time we want to draw humans, you know, like crazy assassins and, you know, really game fun, fun art. Um, we want to draw people that are moving, we don't always want to draw something that's sitting stiff. So using gesture lines helps you be more loose with your work. And that leads me to my next point. Another reason why your drawings might suck is lack of confidence. You guys have no confidence and I suffer from this. Right now, my drawings suck because I have no confidence. I may have line, no line dependency. I may have nixed that from my life. I use lots of references. I'm always thinking about my technique, making it much easier for me to draw and much more fluid and my lines are, are less needed and my lines are um, quick and soft and, and, and it kind of makes sense. Oh, okay, I have all of that. How about my confidence? I have like no confidence. I'm telling you guys, I have a problem. <laughs> Ask anybody I know. I have like a, I have just like this, like this jitter. I don't know what it is, like this anxiety when I draw because I'm a perfectionist and it's terrible. Um, perfectionism kind of led me to drawing and drawing better, but then it also led me to being really, really um, like my worst critic. Like I may critique you guys, but you can only imagine what I'm like to myself. I, I really am my worst critic, and um, I give my, I don't give myself credit. And I know that's my problem right now. And I'm, I'm trying to take it on by just, you know, having fun. So having fun really is the main deal with lack of confidence. When you have fun, you loosen up a little bit. You try new things. You're less scared. You're not afraid to jump in. Sometimes your drawings suck because you're just drawing an eye all day long. You're not attaching a human personality to it. You're drawing, you know, a, a, like a tree instead of attaching it to a real landscape. Um, you guys aren't really like a, like a person standing beside a tree instead of a person standing beside a tree beside a landscape. Um, there's so many ways we can dress up our paintings and our anxiety and fear. So fear is directly related to it and our fear doesn't allow us to venture into the world and start creating something that is new to us. So confidence and fear lead to our lack of references as well because we're not really trying any new things. So try new things. Try drawing other things than what you usually draw. One of the reasons why your lines might suck or I mean your drawings might suck is because of this problem. So I kind of just almost crossed out <clears throat> that thing at the top. Okay. So that's, that's the next step. Um, another big, big reason, I'm going to try to fit all this into one canvas. Another big reason why you're drawing suck today is because you're not drawing enough. You guys think you can just draw like one drawing a day and you're going to improve? No, it's not like that. You're, you're fighting yourself. You are your worst enemy, but you also are your best friend when it comes to drawing. I know that sounds so cliche, but one of the things that I always say, I'm always repeating this, is um, you're in good hands because you're in your own hands, meaning you have the power. I'm so sorry, it's so cheesy, just like cheese alert, like queso alert, just get ready. You have the power to change your life. You have the power to change the entire track of your art, where you're going. You have a, you, like, you know, you can just, you're probably derailing right now. You're probably not knowing what to do with your art. You draw a little bit every day. You're not really driven. You're not seeing results. So lack of results makes you less motivated, which makes you less confident. So let me write that here. Lack of results demotivates you. And the lack of results is entirely accredited to the fact that you don't practice enough. You don't draw enough. Let me just write draw enough. Practice makes it not fun. Draw enough. You don't. <laughs> I'm writing sentences backwards. You don't draw enough. Okay. You want like I said back. I agree with you. How much should I be drawing? Once a day. Draw for 30 minutes once a day. Draw for, um, okay, let me gauge it according to how I learned how to draw. I started drawing seriously after I started reading Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's it. And that was around grade five. So I was 11. And I was so inspired by Lord of the Rings, I'd come home and I just, for, to a point where I wished I could be in that world. Like, it was an escapism for me. 
So you have to really ask yourself, what does art mean to you? If you want to draw every day and you want to listen to my advice and say, okay, I'm going to draw every day, this is what you need to ask yourself. How important is art to you? Are you really using it as a form of escape? If you are, that's good. Um, because that means you're going to be driven, you're going to depend on it, you're going to depend on art, and soon it'll mold itself into your identity. So if you are using art as a, a form of escape, or a form of self-expression, so let me write these down. Escape, sorry about my writing, self-expression. These things will make you draw every day. These things will make you draw every single day. And at that point, you know, you no longer care about the time frame I told you. Like I told you 30 minutes. You don't care. You're going to go four hours of drawing every day. Six hours. Half the day. As soon as you get home from school, you're straight on your sketchbook. And that's what I did. I didn't even have a sketchbook. We were growing, We grew up a little bit poor because we had a massive family. And there wasn't enough to go around. And there was just enough to go around that everyone got food and clothing. And we were all warm. And we had a little bit of cable every three months or something. It was canceled on and off. So we didn't ha I didn't have that much inspiration, so all I had was books. And I would, okay, don't tell anybody, <laughs> but I would go into the computer class in my school, in my public school. Um, this was in elementary, and I would steal printer paper. Because that was like, it was gorgeous. It was like, every time I saw it, I was like, oh. It was like glowing, and it was beautiful. And it was 50 sheets just waiting to be filled with drawings. And I would take it home. Maybe one day I'll show you guys my, my sketches from when I was a kid. I have them. They're just stored and covered in dust. But, oh, man, I would just fill it with, like, elves and, and, and knights and the, the black riders. I don't know if you guys know about the Nazgul, but they were my favorite thing about the Lord of the Rings. They were so cool. And, um, and I would just draw and draw and draw and draw every single day. By the time I was grade 8, I was, um, like, I was just recognized as that artist girl. And that's when I really just blew up. And that's when I crossed over, when my drawings didn't look bad anymore, when they actually started to look good. And drawing every day, yeah, I didn't have any of this stuff back then. I was dependent on lines, like, for sure. I didn't use many references. Sorry, something just fell. I didn't use references. I didn't really think about shapes and helping me break down and, and techniques and stuff. But I did draw enough. And that made my drawings suck less. Like, if you see them now, they're absolute crap. But back then, it was pretty good for my age. And it was pretty good for the fact that I had no resources. So, um... I have proof that this works, and my life is proof that drawing enough works, just drawing every day. You know, none of that YouTube mumbo-jumbo, if the internet turned off, and you wanted to get better, and you had no books, and you were snowed in for like six months, and you just wanted to draw, just drawing every single day will make you get better, just that by itself. Imagine that with all of this in mind. That's crazy. You guys are going to improve if you think about all this at once. You guys are going to improve in like a year, you're going to be like a completely different artist. So don't forget to draw enough. Every day is a really good amount. If you have work, if you have school, do not tell me you don't have enough time. Like, don't even think about bringing that up. That is bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it right now. If you tell me you don't have time, that's bullshit. You know you have time. And this is a piece of advice I gave someone on Hangouts the other day. If you can go to the washroom and sit there on your smartphone for probably 30 minutes to 45 minutes, you will have time to draw. Get a pencil and a sketchbook instead and draw on that. People have magazines, people have Game Boys in their bathroom to get them through that um, the waiting period. Uh, so having a sketchbook there will, will add it will add up in the day, just drawing something. Um, drawing something every day gets you closer to the good thing. So you got to get all the sucky drawings out of the way, by the way. The difference between a pro and a beginner is that the pro has made a million more mistakes than the beginner. You got to draw the shitty drawings, you know, to get through the shitty drawings and, and get to the good ones. You have to draw the shitty stuff. And drawing every day, 30 minutes, it, it's going to help you get through that. It's going to help you get through all of that. Uh, practice that's needed of you, hours, thinking time, the way the brain develops, it just takes time to get used to a habit. You have to start building good habits too, and good habits is related to technique. Um, sorry, technique. Uh, so if you're not drawing every day, your drawing is going to stay sucky. Please draw every day. Try to. You're going to find time. In the morning, first 30 minutes of your of your day, have a sketchbook by your by your bed. Before you go to bed, have a sketchbook by your bed. Just some drawing, just like a quick sketch will change the way you think. <clears throat> and um, and there's one last really, really important tip. These aren't the only reasons why your drawings might suck. Um, the final reason is community. If you guys aren't surrounded by people who draw, your drawings will stay sucky. You have to surround yourself with people who draw. Someone to compete with, someone to give you feedback, constructive criticism, someone to 
change the way you think about your own art. Someone who tells you, hey, you should flip the canvas. I used to draw on those pieces of paper and flip the paper and look behind the, like I used to flip the paper to the light. So I would face the drawing to the light and look through because the papers are transparent or translucent and I would see the image flipped. So I would find all my mistakes there and that's, as soon as I started doing that, my drawings got better. Um, so all of those reasons are, like over here, all of these reasons are reasons why your drawings might suck. The community also pushes you, makes you draw every day. You see these people drawing every day. Um, they're going to make you think differently about how your study habits are affecting you. you I used to see these guys drawing. Um, it was like a 99 day challenge or a 100 day or 150 day challenge or something. They would draw nothing but hands. And these guys would just be masters at hand by the end of the day. And a year is gone by the end of those days. And a year will pass anyways. All this, you know, your life is going to go on anyway. Why not let it go on where a year from now you're, you're where you want to be. You're probably further than where you want to be. The same thing goes for working out or like quitting smoking or any like big goal. Um, is, is surrounding yourself with community, surrounding yourself with people that will encourage you, motivate you, help you. We're social creatures. We need someone to talk to all the time about the thing that we like. And that's it. We need to express ourselves. And art is a long ass journey and it's probably one of the hardest journeys that you're going to face. You're going to face a lot of self-criticism. You're going to face a lot of um, outside criticism. And it's going to be difficult. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. And I'm not here tiptoeing around your emotions. If this video was too harsh on you, you're not ready to improve. You're, you're still licking your wounds. You're still at that point where you're not really ready to, to get on those on that stair climber of art and just face the pain. Um, there's a lot of pain involved in any kind of growth in the world. That's just how the world works. Remember that you have to surround yourself with community as people and the community of art all around. So watching anime isn't a bad idea. Uh, watching um, fantasy movies isn't really a bad idea. Something that'll inspire you, that'll make you want to create your own world. Usually fantasy is like the friend of artists. We kind of like to just fantasize and escape. Um, get yourself well read. Uh, start reading some of the classics. At least, you know, like blurbs or summaries of the classics. Look at the way the world has created art in the past and that might motivate you to draw every single day. The hardest of all of these, the hardest point of all of these is drawing enough. Is just drawing every day. It takes a long time, probably a month or more, a little bit less. There's different theories to develop a habit. So it'll take time for you to really develop the habit of drawing every day to a point where you need it. You know, you need your art fix. So think about all of this. These reasons could be, are probably, most surely, the reasons why your drawings are, haven't been improving, why you've stagnated, why you've just re reached a dead end or artist block, or whatever you want to call it. Um, these are the reasons why your drawings suck. If you want to get better, tackle all these reasons head on. Have the courage to improve um, because you're going to benefit from that. You're going to feel great about yourself. You're going to feel so happy that you've managed to tackle on this really difficult skill to earn and you've earned it. So time will pass anyway. Make sure that time passes efficiently. Make sure you're learning efficiently. And, um, and that's it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe my channel because I have lots of lessons that are in-depth um, that will cover all of the stuff that you need to think about. Um, the channel offers itself as a community for you guys if you stick to the classes. And um, go to the Google community if you guys want to join there. People are always submitting their stuff for critique. That's where I grab the stuff for critique hours every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. on twitch.tv slash And you guys can catch me there. Um, we really want this community to grow as well, so stick, stick to it. It'll help you as much as you help it. And... Um, and that's it. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.